DTF hack, what is it, how is it done, and what is the difference between that and regular sublimation? Let's find out. Hey everyone, Mary June here. Welcome back to my channel, Freckled and Crafty. Today we are going to be diving into the whole DTF hack phenomenon. Maybe it's not a phenomenon, but it sounded good. Anywho, for some of you that may have heard of DTF, basically it's a direct to film way of designing a shirt and they have special printers for this. I don't have one. Uh, I believe it costs a lot of money. So, and since I just started into, I just started getting into sublimation, I really didn't feel like I should buy anything else until I really get this whole sublimation thing down. And I just, you know, I'm just touching, getting my fingers wet with all this stuff. So. Anyway, well, of course, with the power of YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and all of those cool social media stuff, I heard about DTF hack. And the more I studied about that, the more I'm learning all kinds of cool things you can do with the DTF hack. But for today, I thought that we could just dive into the actual, not the actual, but just the regular DTF hack. It's simple yet it is not. What do I mean? Well, let me explain. The difference between a DTF hack and a regular sublimation is with sublimation, you are really only supposed to be sublimating on um, polyester or any kind of uh, substrate that has poly coating on it because what it does is um, the ink turns into gas and the gas basically penetrates itself into the fibers of the polyester fabric and also into the poly coating. So with that being said, you can do sublimation on regular cotton, but you're not going to get the same results as you would if you were to sublimate on things that have polyester or poly coating on it. For instance, if you were to sublimate on a polyester shirt, the higher the polyester content, the brighter, the more vivid the color will be, the longer it will last because it literally infuses itself into the fibers, making it last for the length, for the life of the actual shirt. It may even outlast the shirt, but with cotton, it doesn't work like that. So some people like to wear cotton. Some people dislike to wear polyester. So, and not everybody can afford to buy a DTF printing machine. So came a hack. Who came up with it? I have no idea, but I thought it's pretty cool. And basically there's a few more steps that you have to take and a few more supplies that you need in order for you to actually perform this DTF hack. So let's get to it. For this DTF hack, there are a few things that you will need besides your regular sublimation items. So clearly you're going to need to have a printer to print out your design, but you also need a specific type of paper. You can't just use a regular sublimation paper. So you will need a special DTF transfer uh, paper. And um, this one, the brand is Gauzy. I think that's what it's called. And this one is an A3 sheet, comes with 20 sheets. And it's like a 13 by 17. I think that's what A3 stands for but um, they do come in different sizes. They also come in like an eight and a half by 11 and I think bigger sizes, but this is what I have. Uh, other people recommend uh, different brands, but this is what I had in hand, so this is what I'm gonna use. So, DTF printing trans transfer printer sheet, okay? Next, another thing that you will need is a DTF transfer powder. This one I got from Amazon. It's highly recommended by a lot of um, crafters out there. So this is what I have been using. Uh, this is the only one that I've used, so I can't really compare it with other things, with other ones. So, but I like it so far, so I'm not gonna complain. So this, this is the stuff that we need for that. We also need a cotton shirt. So today I have a 100% heavy, heavy cotton, 100% uh, cotton Gildan t-shirt. So we're gonna, do our little hack on this t-shirt. You also need a heat transfer tape because it will be a great idea for you to tape down your design so that it, it doesn't shift around when you lift up your press. So clearly, heat transfer tape, oopsies, 
You also need to make sure that you have parchment paper or uh, butcher's paper to protect your uh, shirt and also your press. It's always just, always good to be safe, okay? Now, you're asking me why do I have this big old container? Well, the reason why I have this container is because I like to keep my powder uh, contained so what I do is I put my design inside and then I sprinkle the powder and then all the powder stays in there I do have a piece of parchment paper in there and then when I'm done I just transfer the rest of that powder back into my container so then that way I don't waste anything okay so aside from the all of this you definitely need a printer that you will need that you will print out your design with and you need sublimation ink for this hack all right, before I print my design, I wanted to just talk a little bit more about the transfer sheet that I will be using. Now, like I had mentioned before, there are a variety of transfer sheets out there that you can find. And uh, some of them actually have one side that is more matte and then the other side is more obviously glossy. When you're printing, you wanna make sure that you print on the matte side of the sheet. Now with this in particular, I pulled it out of the envelope that it was in. There is a sticker on top of it that says, this side is a printing side, so please keep the spacing up. So what I did was I pulled this out, slid it right here on my table, so it is facing the correct, the right direction. Now, sometimes I may forget which side I put it on, and so what I do is I just kind of fold the other side, and I'm really hoping that you guys can see this, but this particular brand, one side only has a slight bit of gloss that you can see. Um, and so that's how I can tell which side is the side that needs to be printed on and which side is not. Okay, so this one is more matted. Now, another thing is that these sheets are quite thin. Some printers have a hard time reading that it's there, so it won't pull it out of the tray to proceed with the printing and it won't detect it. And so it will need the help of something else heavier so that the printer can actually grasp it. Now I do have a Sawgrass SG-1000 and I have never really tried to try to run it through without anything attached to it. I don't know why, because I feel like if I waste, um, if I try that, I might just waste ink. So just to be safe, I always like to play on the safe side. I always attach a piece of paper onto my, my DTF sheet just so that my printer can actually pull it. Now, when you're attaching a piece of paper, you can do uh, another regular printing paper or a cardstock piece of paper. I do recommend that you do not use another sublimation sheet of paper because then that will kind of be wasteful. I mean, you can use it as long as you, you know, you take it and reuse it again. I guess you can do that. You could also use uh, a piece of paper that's that you made a mistake on, you know, and then you're going to throw it away. Don't throw it away. Use it as like the paper grab grabber. So what I do is I take the piece of paper. So this is the part that's going to be printing on. And when I put it in my printer, I need it to face this way. So I am going to put this printing paper right on top and I'm just going to use a little bit of printer's tape and I'm going to leave a little bit of slit on the top. Let's see if I can show that to you guys. So basically what that's going to look like is that see that little bit of slit right there that's what i'm going to fold over onto my this on to my dtf sheet and that's basically what's going to hold it together i mean you can probably fold it a little bit more and not be so skimpy on the tape like what i'm doing then you wouldn't have as much of a hard time folding it over and taping it up but you know everything is a lesson here every time this is probably like i don't know the fifth sixth time i've done this and i'm still learning my lessons <laughs> okay so and since i had this facing down and my mat is i don't know it just collects dirt and all kinds of whatever i want to make sure that i dust that off so there are no excess debris on there when i print on my design 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put this inside my printer and I'm gonna go and print my design. Okay, here is my design and as you can see, the ink is quite wet. I'm going to go ahead and take off the printer paper that I had attached on there ever so carefully. We don't want any of that ink to get messed up or anything, so I'm gonna spread my powder. I'm gonna spread a liberal amount. I wanna make sure that every single ink area is covered. Okay, now you don't necessarily have to go crazy and use this much like I just did. You can just apply it a little bit on one side and just kind of go back and forth. But I mean, like I said, by using it this way, by putting it in a plastic container like this, then you eliminate the possibility of wasting more. And then you could always put it back in your container. So this actually acts, it's like a powder. It's like powdered sugar. Oh, no, just kidding. It's like, <laughs> uh, not sea salt but like salt texture regular table salt texture it's kind of like that don't try to stick your finger in it to feel it and taste it that's not good okay now look at that now it has this nice thin kind of layer of coating on there that's exactly how we want it oh i'm so excited to see this design okay so now what i'm going to do is i have my my heat press already turned on did i say that you need a heat press of course you need a heat press because you're going to press it on a shirt so I have my heat press turned on. It's already up to the temperature that I want it to go to. I will be pressing down, I'm gonna press down the bottom plate for like 20 seconds just so that it will um, heat up that bottom, that bottom side of my press. And then I'm gonna lay this sheet on top and I'm going to hold, I'm gonna hover the top part of my press on top of it and let it cure for 60 seconds. All right, I went ahead and pressed, I closed my press for about 20 seconds just so that I could heat up this bottom right here. And I'm gonna take my design, which I think is covered really well with the powder. I'm gonna lay that over here. And I'm gonna let this hover right on top for about 60 seconds or until the into my press. I pressed too hard. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna powder it again. Another lesson learned, you guys. Pay really close attention when you're moving your press. Okay, take two, again. I'm gonna press this down ever so carefully. And I'm just gonna hold it here for 60 seconds. Okay, so it is not quite ready. But before I continue, I really wanna wipe all that off before it settles in there. So give me a second. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press it again, or should I say hover over it again. And I really wanna get it to a point where the powder has actually almost melted and the color is back to being bright as opposed to it looking kind of muted. Okay, I think that finally did it. Look at the difference. See how much brighter that looks? Yee! Actually, you know what? I still have a little bit of powder right up there that I think I just want to make sure is nice and melted. So I'm going to stick it in here for another 30 seconds. And I really need to get that plate really, really close down to the bottom. Yes. All right, there it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and prep our shirt. Remember, this is a 100% cotton gilded t-shirt. I am just going to press it to create a crease in the middle. And I'm gonna do the other side. So pressing your shirt like this in half 
we'll create a crease so you can find out exactly where the middle is so you can center your design. And also it eliminates any kind of moisture that might be in the fibers of the shirt. We don't want any moisture in the shirt. Two things you want to do before you start pressing your design. One, I would suggest to put a piece of parchment paper or butcher's paper in, in between your shirt only because I don't know if it will penetrate it through this Pacific cotton shirt, so better safe than sorry. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And second, you always wanna make sure you lint roll. Just to make sure you don't press any stuff into your design and into your shirt. Okay, here we go. So you're basically gonna look at your design, look at it right side up. Oops, I'm gonna center this. Now, after I've sublimated this, this is already dry. Okay, so you can actually touch this. But I'm gonna press the center, find my center and press it. I also cut off the excess because I didn't need all that. You can choose about three to four finger width from the edge of your collar to the top of your design, or you can use the little nifty collar uh, ruler over there that I have. But I'm just going to eyeball it, just because. Okay, make sure you tape it down. And lastly, parchment cover. Now, because it already has, the, the ink is already on the bottom of this sheet, the possibility of it bleeding, bleeding through is very minimal, but I like to just get into the habit of covering it just for protection because I never know sometimes I might forget and I might not be doing a DTF hack and then I will literally would have just ruined my plate like I almost did. <laughs> I'm going to turn down the temperature of my heat press to 385 and I'm going to be I'm going to be pressing this for 50 seconds. Okay I'm just going to wait for that temperature to go down. I should have done that earlier but it skipped my brain but I'm glad that I didn't forget it this time. Also, when you're pressing, try to make sure that your press isn't super tight or um, super heavy. You don't really need a super heavy press on this. We are up to tap or down to tap. Here we go. Oh, golly. I said not to press too hard. I'm just gonna keep it here. Okay. Oh, actually, <laughs> I almost forgot. This is a cold peel. I feel like I need to press it for like 10 more seconds. All right. Okay. I feel better about that. All right. So this, the DTF hack in particular is a cold peel. If you try to peel it while it is still hot, it won't work. So let's give a couple minutes and just let it cool. In the meantime, I think I'm going to print another one of these, these designs and print it on a polyester shirt and see the difference. Our temperature is up to 400 degrees. It is time to press and I accidentally burnt myself a little bit, but that's beside the story. Okay, here we go. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer my camera so you can see overhead, and we will do the reveal. Here is the regular sublimated t-shirt. Let's see what it looks like. Oh my goodness, wow. Look at how bright the colors are. I mean, seriously. Wow. I'm just like, wow. Okay, now for the DTF hack, let's see. Let's put okay, this is the DTF hack on a 100% cotton shirt. Now, one thing that you will notice that's different when you peel this off, it'll actually, it, it'll give it, it's not quite as easy as um, this one that you just kind of like take off. This one will actually 
peel and make a little bit of a noise. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh, my mark right here didn't stick very well. See that? You see it? Yeah? That one didn't stick very well. But that's okay. I mean, that's just a small thing. But look, wow. That actually doesn't look so bad. That looks pretty good. Let's compare it with, oops, let me take off the, <laughs> I forgot there was parchment paper in there. Let's compare it with the polyester. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. Oh, it's too much. All right. So, actually, it's not that bad. If you really take a look at the comparison, right? I mean, look, that's not bad. Now this does have a feel to it. It's quite thin and it's very smooth and it feels really nice. But this one, it's just, you can't even feel it. And clearly the one on the polyester shirt is much, much brighter. And this one, it could have been less brighter if I didn't use the DTF hack. And actually, if you look at the difference in the shirt, this one is definitely a lot brighter white and this one is not quite as bright. So what is my takeaway from this? I think it did a pretty good job and I am quite impressed. That makes me so happy because then that way I can actually wear cotton shirts and still have that nice, bright, colorful design on it. It is no match with the polyester though. It's hands down so much better but you know what it's okay i can wear both and so i am excited so yay dtf yay <laughs> i have to say that was quite a successful dtf hack the only thing that i would have done differently is i would have made sure that my press was adjusted before i even did this whole thing instead of me trying to press it on my own i probably would have had a better outcome with my R if I had done that properly. But overall, I mean, honestly, this isn't bad. And now the stretch of this, it's pretty good. You can actually stretch it and that should last there for a good long while. That I don't know exactly how long. Maybe I'll do some wash tests. And since I have two of the exact same designs on two different shirts, but it's already proven that this is gonna last. So it's like, I guess the question is, how much of a difference will it have? Well, in order to do that, I would have to press it on two cotton shirts, leave one, and then wash the other ones. Maybe I'll do that. But anyway, well, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope you guys were able to pick up a few tips and tricks and all that good stuff from this video. Uh, I definitely think that this is a great thing because there are so many cotton uh, material out there or other materials out there that you can actually do this kind of thing with rather than just sticking to the polyester because I do know that there's a lot of people that would prefer non-polyester uh, over polyester. So, not bad. Anyway, but before I end this video, I just wanna say thank you Thank you, thank you for all of you who have subscribed. In this week, I actually reached 100 subscribers and <laughs> I know that just doesn't seem like it's a lot, but for me, when I started this video, I was very hesitant. I, I, I had so many questions and doubts, but I decided to just press record and just keep going. And to have this many of you respond, it has just been I, I don't even have the proper words to express exactly how I feel. I'm just so grateful and so honored that you are willing to come and watch my videos and just, you know, hang out with me for a little bit. And because I am extremely grateful, I do want to have a giveaway. 
um i will put all of the people that is in my that's currently subscribed i will take your name and i will put it in a bowl and i will mix it up and i will pick a lucky winner and if you have not subscribed yet go ahead and subscribe now because i will actually do the drawing next week when i do my next video and i will announce who the winner is and you will get a prize that i made so thank you again so much from the bottom of my heart i I just can't, I, I can't say enough. So I'm very grateful. Anyway, so please like, subscribe and follow and please share so that other people can also pick up a few tips and tricks from whatever I'm learning and also from the things that I'm messing up on. So until next time, life is too short, craft it well. Bye.